ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. Nothing better than the scenes of a rivalry weekend here on Thanksgiving weekend in college football. What a scene it was in Columbus. And here in Athens, we are set for a rivalry game as well. Clean old fashioned hate for the 116th time. Georgia Tech and Georgia will meet. The Dogs have won four in a row. Georgia Tech, though, coming off of a big road win against North Carolina last week. And they are looking to win another thriller here at Sanford Stadium, just like they did six years ago. As we welcome you to ESPN College Football, presented by Marathon. This is the SEC on ESPN. Not just the traditional rivalry weekend in college football, but also the tradition of senior day and one of the great senior day stories in all of college football Stetson Bennett as he came out to meet his family the roars of the crowd here in Athens at a short time ago Chris Button spoke with his parents with Stetson's parents and dad what's it been like to watch this incredible story unfold for your son wow what, what a what a dream just you know we dreamed about it as a, as a child and just getting to watch him grow up and getting to hear the uh, the crowd cheer for him as he's running down it's just really really a special moment mom you get to stand here on the field and watch him in his final home game as part of the senior day celebration what are the emotions right now for you I'm wearing sunglasses so you can't see me crying <laughs> yeah I'm just so proud of him I'm so proud of him he's, I'm glad all his brothers and sisters are here and I'm just proud of him Congratulations. Enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, thanks very much. Bob Shusen and Dan Orlovsky. And look, you lived this as a college athlete. Maybe not quite this, yeah, yeah, but still yeah. a lot of emotions <laughs> on senior day. And now if you're a dog, you got to refocus because yeah. they're thinking national championship again. They're the number one team in America for a reason. Stetson Bennett quarterbacks, probably the most complete team in all America. So they got the best big play making tight end in all college football in Brock Bowers. Their offensive line is the finalist for the Joe Moore Award, which is the best offensive line in America. They have a defense that has played 44 quarters of defensive football this season. 24 of those quarters, the other team has not scored a single point. So when I talk about complete, they really don't have a flaw on their football team. And candidly, Bob, they're just a joy to watch on tape. It's a lot of fun. This environment's going to be incredible today. It's one of the best in all college football. And by the way, last season, Georgia had 15 players drafted yeah. off of last year's team. Not a big drop off. Which, of course, was a record, and yet they're the number one team in America again. As Georgia won the toss, deferred to the second half, Georgia Tech will begin with the football. And then I guess there's probably something smart to the head coach. Kirby Smart put his defense out there first. Yeah, 11 points a game given up by this defensive unit. A fair catch called by Hassan Hall at the two yard line. So it comes out to the 25. Boy, it is tough to make a yard at times against this defense. The way I describe this defense, Bob, elite in the uncontrollables. They're big, they're strong, they're fast, they're powerful. And then the elite in the controllables. How well they communicate, they leverage the football, they play with great intensity. There's really not a flaw on that 11 deep unit. It's a huge challenge for Georgia Tech today. How about that? Let's get off to a hot start. Well, Zach Gibson, and we expect to see Tyson Pumachan at quarterback as well at some point. For Tech takeover at their own 25 with Dante Smith plowing his way. That's a great start for the Yellow Jackets as the Ramblin' Rick picks up eight on first down. If you can create some second down and shorts for the redshirt sophomore Zach Gibson, that will do nothing but help. Good player, he's been in and out of the unit for Georgia Tech this year. So many injuries at the quarterback position. Man, how well he can get through progressions today and get it out of his hands is gonna be huge. So nine yards on first down for Smith. As the Akron transfer, Zach Gibson at quarterback. Hands one off to Smith again. And he gets down the sideline, picks up a first down. Out to the 43 yard line before he's bumped out by Keely Ringo. Couple of nine yard runs to start the game for Dante Smith. This is a Georgia Tech offensive line that one of the youngest in the country. We're talking 
left to right, freshman, sophomore, 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 freshman. Going against one of the best defensive line units in all college football. Two back to back, back really good plays, collapsing the edge. Incomplete on Gibson's first attempt, threw it in no man's land. E.J. Jenkins looked to be the closest receiver to that pass. It'll be second down and 10 as we take a look at our impact players. Yeah, McCullen for Georgia Tech's offense. I mean, he's got 54 catchers for 590 yards, three touchdowns. He's going to have to have a massive game for them to have a chance to hang. And then the two inside linebackers for Georgia, Munden and Dumas Johnson, really good young players. They fly sideline to sideline. Their communication level's great. They are absolutely unquestionably the leaders of this unit. That's Dylan Leonard in motion. Wide receiver screen for McCollum. And he gets about half of what they need. Brought down at midfield, picked up seven. So it will be third down and three right at midfield. Nate McCollum has three 100 yard games this season. He racked up at least through his first 11 games of his career. More receptions than Calvin Johnson had when he was a Yellow Jacket. And look at the difference between him and the next guy, right? For an offense that is incredibly young and unproven, he's no question their go-to person. Same play. Same result. The first down. McCollum does it again. If it works once, why not go right back to it? Yeah, pretty smart, too. You can see that Georgia Tech actually held their huddle for a really long time. Wait and wait and wait. Clock gets to about 8 or 10 on the play clock. Then they snap, get in the formation, not allowing Georgia to get exactly in the way that they want to match. Kick the ball out to the perimeter, first down. You got to love that if you're Georgia Tech early on. Dante Smith, the tailback again. Play action again. A little shoulder fake and a deep shot for McCollum. Underthrown. Incomplete. Javon Bullard was there in coverage. An underthrown ball. You're always worried as a defender if there might be pass interference, but a good job by Bullard. Yeah, watch 22 Bullard right off the hash right there. He's become one of their playmakers in the back end. Inside slot fade. You can see McCollum try to get back. I love the fact that Bullard kind of pe peels his hands off, right, to avoid the pass interference. That young man's had a really good month or so for this Georgia defense. Second down and 10. Back to the ground and Smith. Maybe a half yard. So what has been a very good opening drive for Georgia Tech to get from their own 25 to just outside the Georgia 40. Now they need a third down and nine conversion. Yeah, and so two things here. You're, you're trending or getting very close to four down potential territory for Georgia Tech. You're not gonna win this game with field goals. Also the ability to pop a run here to see if you can get into that fourth and four situation, which makes it more likely for you to go for it. At least statistically, you got a bad third down offense against the best Third down defense in the SEC and number three in America. Incomplete. On the go route down the sideline for Jenkins. Well, from here, you are looking at close to a 60-yard field goal. That is out of Gavin Stewart's range. Will they go for it? Watch how good Ringo is here, Bob. Receiver peek back. You peek back for the ball. That started to show up on tape. That sophomore has really started to put the technicality of the position on tape. Now fourth and nine. I don't mind them going for it on fourth down. That's why I would have loved to see a run there to get a little bit more favorable situation if you're going to go for it. Even a short pass just to make up yeah, some yardage, make it fourth and manageable. Fourth down and nine. Georgia Tech going for it. Here comes the blitz. One on one. Flip down the sideline. Dropped right down the chimney to McCollum. It is first and goal. Georgia Tech at the seven. They pick up 35 on fourth down and nine. Bobby, it's the same play they called on first down, the slot fade. You cut the split to give space for the throw, then the throw bleeds them all the way to the side, and I right over the left shoulder. Up tempo. Smith stopped at the line of scrimmage. Michael Williams, Robert Beal, they were both there for the dogs. It'll be second down and goal. You know, Bobby, going back to that slot fade, that's why you call that. You give that receiver all that space. 
So then he can get bled or faded to the sideline, and it makes for a less perfect throw needed for the completion. And now they're going to bring in Tyson Pumachan, the redshirt sophomore, the Clemson transfer <laughs> at quarterback. So, Dan, this changes their entire play calling structure as well, doesn't yeah, it? Not? You can go the zone read world and the designed quarterback run. Pumachan on a keeper. He'll cruise to the end zone for an opening touchdown for Georgia Tech. A rambling wreck on their opening drive do what they could not do at all last season when we called this game. And that is put points on the board. Shut out at home, 45 to nothing last year. How about an 11-play touchdown drive to start this year? A great throw on fourth down to McCullum on the inside slot fade. And then they bring in the quarterback, Pumachan. He outleverages the defense, and Georgia Tech is here to play 7-0 on the road. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Marathon. Perfect day for a rivalry game here in Athens. And what a start for the Yellow Jackets. Right down the field to score the rarest of first quarter touchdowns against the best defense in college football. And now the first opportunity for Georgia at the 25, but back to the touchdown. They came on at a four strong, Bobby. One, two, three, four. Now as Malachi Carter is going to go block to Smith, safety Smith, Watch what happens to Lasseter on the outside. He's the corner that's got vision, and Pumachan is going to out leverage him as he gets lost inside. Vision on the receiver going down to block the safety. Walk in touchdown. The formation of putting four strong changes everybody's eyes, responsibility, and Lasseter has the vision in the wrong area. Walk in touchdown. An 11 play, 75 yard scoring drive, and the first time in 16 games that the Georgia defense allows a first quarter touchdown. So now the dogs to the offense. End around to Brock Bowers. He picks up four and Stetson Bennett began his career as a walk on at Georgia and really made a name for himself as the scout team quarterback imitating Baker Mayfield but then goes the Juco route to try and get some reps returns to Georgia as a scholarship starter. And once he got the job, he never gave it up. 25 and three, the MVP of the college football playoff championship of last year, looking for another title, but finds himself in the rare position of being down on the scoreboard to start a game. And now Georgia Tech's defense rallies to make the stop on Bowers for no gain. It will be third down and six for the dogs. Now, Bobby, I'd say he does all the things that are so hard to measure for a quarterback well. Accuracy, timing, the movement in the pocket, making the right decision, the leadership, the in and out of getting the, the right play at the line of scrimmage, the engagement, encouragement with his teammates, steady hand, confidence, like all those things that sometimes are really hard for us to quantify and we kind of put them under the it label. Stetson does at a really high level. Fifth best on third down in America, best in the SEC. Bennett on third down and six, incomplete. Nothing statistically has held up so far. As Georgia Tech forces a three and out, they're about to get the football back with a seven nothing lead. Yeah, just a miss. Watch left side of your screen, Kiaris Jackson, man coverage coming on the slant. Doesn't look like that ball gets tipped. He just puts it behind him. You know, Kirby Smart said it this week, like this week always scares me to death because it's different because of the holiday. Your, your routine is different, how you prepare is different. He spent a lot of time with his team talking about how the mighty fall. Georgia Tech's come out playing really good football and Georgia only six minutes in is gonna have to wake up. Jamal Haynes at his own 20 yard line, a fair catch. 51 yard punt by Brett Thorson. It's a look of concern there.
ESPN College Football is presented by Marathon. Get the most out of your drive and in part by Taco Bell. Vote for this month's Live Moss student section on the Taco Bell app. It was a thriller back in 2016. Two fourth quarter touchdowns by the Yellow Jackets. Secured a 28-27 come from behind win. That, by the way, was the last time that Georgia gave up an opening drive touchdown to begin a game until today when Georgia Tech does it again. Is this like an announcer jinx thing? I'm trying, I guess, with every <laughs> statistic we've thrown out there so far. And Georgia Tech with an empty backfield and Zach Gibson back to work. And again, they'll try at the wide receiver screen route. And it will get them about four yards. As Malik Rutherford was brought down at the 24-yard line. Yeah, Rutherford's redshirt freshman from Miami. Got to get the ball in his hands a little bit if you're a Georgia Tech. You know, we were talking about this Georgia defense yesterday, Bob, and how great they were. And I looked at you and said, if you don't have a guy in the slot that consistently can win, you can't do well against them. And you saw that a little bit early on with Nate McCullum on the first drive and now Rutherford with the perimeter screen on first down. Gibson again, swing pass to the true freshman, Jamie Felix. Very close to a first down as we check in with Matt Barry. Hi, guys. Good afternoon. Happy college football weekend. Time now for the AT&T 5G countdown to the CFB championship. How's this for a start for Clemson's defense? Pick six, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. in the battle for the Palmetto State. 7-0 Clemson over South Carolina. So what you'd probably expect so far in Death Valley. Clemson takes the early lead on South Carolina. The opposite of what you would expect between the hedges. The Yellow Jackets with a first down again and a jet sweep. Nate McCollum tries to turn the corner and does. Nine more yards. How about the play calling mix getting the ball to the perimeter early for Georgia Tech. It's been a clinic so far. Yeah, I love the fact that they put everybody into the boundary. See how all these people are down into the boundary? Now you've created that space for an arc release. You flip the jet. Now it's McCullum. Go be a playmaker out in space. Make the safety Smith miss. You know, something early on through this first quarter so far, Georgia Tech is doing everything they can to get the ball, one, to the perimeter, and two, into Nate McCollum's hands. you got to love this out of Chip Long, their offensive coordinator. Up the middle, that's a first down run for Felix. Needed one, picked up two. Tramel Walthour brought him down. But Georgia Tech moves the chains again as they have dominated the first eight minutes of this game. And there's Chip Long right there, the play caller. It, he's dealt with, what, four or five quarterback changes when it came to who was playing, who wasn't playing. Jeff Smith, Sims, Pyron, Pumachan, Gibson, again, a very young offensive line. They've had receivers miss some time. Nate McCollum didn't play last week. There's Puma John right there. And every week they found a way to try to put something together that allows their players to play at least to their strengths or what they know they can operate. Seam shot in stride. It's Dylan Leonard, the tight end, but he couldn't hold on. Oh, that's one that Georgia Tech needed. Wide open was Leonard. Gibson put it right in his hands. A little fake to the toss. There's Leonard with the seam. Ooh. Gosh, that is a perfect play call and throw from Gibson. You fake the toss, you get the defense moving horizontally, then you replace them vertically with the seam. Perfect throw. Leonard's a guy who's become you know, 27 career catches. They motion him a ton. They move him around a bunch in this offense. We'd love to have that one back. Instead, it's second down and 10. And the screen not there. Ryan King motioned behind Zach Gibson, but they wanted to throw him the swing pass. Georgia was ready for it. And again, Gibson, the third of four quarterbacks to play this season. Jeff Sims, midway through the season, a foot injury against Virginia. So the true freshman, Zach Pyron, who took over against Florida State back four weeks ago after a couple of series when they couldn't move the football and then played against Miami. He broke his collarbone a couple of games ago against the Kings. So that forced Zach Gibson in and he and Pumachon to come the one-two punch. Here's third down and 10. Back shoulder throw to the sideline incomplete. 
Another opportunity for Leonard, and he couldn't pull that one in either. And Georgia will get a stop. It'll be a Georgia Tech punt. Third and long. Georgia's pass rush gets home. They play good coverage. There's Brent Key talking to Dylan Leonard right there. Two opportunities on that drive. They know if they're going to have the chance to pull off this what would be historic upset, he's going to have to have a big part of their offense. I love the fact that the coach continues to encourage him, but Georgia getting into that obvious passing situation is ideal for them. So the Leonard drop looms that much larger as Shanahan comes on to punt. Lad McConkie from the 15-yard line. Runs into his own man and then gets free. Flags everywhere as McConkie is brought down at the 29-yard line. It's a 15-yard return if it stands. But we'll have to check the marker. During the return, personal foul with targeting on the kicking team, number 15. 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. That play is under video review. Sarad Bryant may be kicked out of this game. We'll see when we come back. While we were away, Sarad Bryant, redshirt freshman safety for Georgia Tech, and Dan, targeting on this play, upheld, and it's the right call. Absolutely, right this moment, right there. Launches, defenseless player on the ground. You love emotion, you love aggression, but that is uncalled for. Good job by the officiating crew. So mistakes that Georgia Tech you would think can't afford to make from the Dylan Leonard drop that short-circuited their last drive to now a 15-yard penalty that sets Georgia up with great field position at their own 44-yard line. Kenny McIntosh. Gang tackled near midfield, a gain of five, back to Matt. Hey guys, time now for your IHG Hotels and Resort Studio update. First possession of the game for the Buckeyes. All the way down the field, Emeka Buka touchdown, 7-0. First quarter, Ohio State. We've got a 7-0 game here as well. Bob Shoes and Dan Orlovsky and Chris Budden. Five and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter, and it's Georgia Tech with a stunning first 10 minutes or so. But now Georgia near midfield, second down and five. McIntosh again, first down and more. Spins down to the 41-yard line of Tech. LaMiles Brooks made the stop. That's a gain of nine. This run game for Georgia is just so good. Their offensive line does such a good job of collapsing stuff. And then there are two big tight ends, Brock Bowers, who's become a better tight end. We know he's the explosive playmaker. And then Darnell Washington, 6'7", 270, lead the way for McIntosh. 143 yards last week, career high. Runs with conviction, great vision and eyes. Play action on first down for Bennett. Looking downfield, the check down wasn't there, but a running alley is. And the quarterback cruises to the 36-yard line. As he picks up about six, Charlie Thomas ran him out. It'll be second down and four. One of those teams in college football that still believes in putting the quarterback under center, running some play action pass. It's what Stetson Bennett candidly does best. They're afforded to do it, one, because of their commitment with Todd Munkin, their offensive coordinator, to run the football. Those tight ends that I mentioned, all the different formations that they get into, and allows Stetson to play really fast instead of playing in a hurry. You could see it there was a decision to go take off as a runner. Play action, and Bennett checks one down and complete through the hands of Bowers. So it will be third down and four at the Georgia Tech 36. Yeah, great play. They bring the corner blitz if you're Georgia Tech, and then Charlie Thomas goes out to cover Brock Bowers. Stetson Bennett basically wasted. So third and four right around that 36, 37-yard line. 
two things here if you're Georgia. You can still pop a run. If you want to sit there and say Georgia Tech's going to play man coverage against us, you can get one of your zone read RPOs. Charlie Thomas is a great player in man coverage. And then you can also understand that this could be four down territory for you. McIntosh lines up as the slot receiver left. Empty backfield for Stetson Bennett. Four-man rush. Slant. Fits it in. The freshman Dylan Bell has a first down. Watch Stetson hang with his eyes, right? Peek to left, the flats out there. See how calm his feet are? And then I love the throw. So often the slant is face mask. Watch as Bell works, patience, get cross face. Now put it on his belly button right there so he can use his six foot one, 210 pound frame to shield the defensive back. That's what I always say ball placement. Accuracy is throwing to your guy. Ball placement throwing away from the defense. Throw it right into Bell's belly to make sure he can secure that catch. Play action and a rollout for Bennett. Slings one to the sideline. The catch made by Darnell Washington. Dan Orlovsky went down to the field before the game, came back up to me and said, Darnell Washington is a large human. We just saw him use that size there. Look at that play fake from Stetson. Put it on his belly, keep the eyes, and there's Washington. The thing I love about Washington, Bob, is I think he's got this body of a, like a, a, a slight offensive lineman, like 6'7", 270, but he moves as almost an H-back tight end where he's athletic enough and laterally quick enough where you can do so many different things with him because of the size differential. That's why Mel Kuyper, as you can see, had him as the number three tight end prospect in the upcoming draft. Quarterback draw goes nowhere. And Stetson Bennett looked up and saw Clayton Powell Lee coming on a safety blitz. Watch Powell Lee just off the middle of your screen. I'm surprised Stetson doesn't throw the fade down at the bottom of the screen to Bell, but Powell Lee's just a, a ball player. Wise beyond his years, a true freshman that's played really well for Georgia Tech this year. They call him Young Vet. Unheralded three-star player, but just an absolute football player for their secondary. I'm surprised Stetson didn't throw that fade there. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage, all out pressure. Give the freshman Bell a chance. Four-man rush. Stepping up in the pocket. Bennett keeping his eyes downfield. Going to take off and run again. Into the red zone. Toe taps along the sideline. Close to a first down. He's got it. Down to the five-yard line. Ace Ely ran him out, but Stetson Bennett picks up 15. It's first and goal, Georgia. Only thing he could do with the football. Everyone's covered down. Go lose. Use your feet. Little ball fake right there to Ely. Get on the sideline. Get down. Good decision. Fade route. Incomplete. Hoping for Marcus Rosamie Jack Saint. And Miles Sims, the Michigan transfer, blankets him in the end zone. Second down and goal. Yeah, get this ball out just a little bit more to that back pylon. You can see Rosamie Jack Saint trying to go up there to elevate to go make that catch over Sims. You really want to throw it to that back pylon to allow him to go run and track it. Defensive back low, throw it by on him. I think you could pound the football if you're here, Georgia. Got a great drive going on. Get back to your run game. They'll toss it. Edwards goes nowhere. Clayton Powell Lee again comes up to help on the stop. Third down and goal after a loss of two. And this is a huge play, you would think, especially trying to keep the momentum for Georgia Tech if they can get a red zone stop here on third and goal at the seventh. I'd like to see them put both tight ends on the same side. So Washington and Bowers on the same side. Get Bowers in a one-on-one -on -one matchup and give him a two-way go. The 11th play of the drive. There's Brock Bowers right there. You're getting man coverage. Well, now it's going to be third and goal at the 12. The offense, number zero, five-yard penalty. That's Darnell Washington that costs the dogs five. You know, Bobby, it looked like Stetson Bennett was going up to the line of scrimmage to try to communicate something and change the play or handle protection, and that's what forced Washington to jump. He's still got a shot here, so now it's more getting in a zone beat. You're expecting zone coverage. If you're Georgia Tech, you got to pay attention to Stetson Bennett's legs, but I still want to see Brock Bowers in the back of the end zone. He's in the slot right. McConkie wide right. 
Bennett looks that way, lobs it for Bowers, knocked away! Flag out! Rodney Shelley, the true freshman nickel, drew the assignment of six foot four Brock Bowers. On the offense, number 84. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Third down. And they actually call offensive pass interference, setting a pick on Lad McConkey. I, I don't. I, watch McConkey. That's a little bit at the end of the play. You can see Brock Bowers go up to try to go make that catch. Now, what, look at this. They're trying to get McC There's no contact made. I'd actually argue that Georgia Tech has got a little bit of McConkey's jersey. That's a missed call. Georgia Tech should decline that penalty, but they're trying to get McConkey as a pick player on that underneath defender. He actually doesn't make any contact at all on Shelley. Yeah, the only reason you would accept that penalty is if you think that that might move Pud Lesney out of field goal range right. because it's a 15-yard penalty, but his career long is 53. He's two of three this year from 40 plus. He certainly has the leg to make it if you accepted the penalty. So they do decline, and it's a 30-yard try. And he just does squeeze it through. But a red zone stop for the Georgia Tech defense. Georgia on the board. 18 seconds to go in the opening quarter. It's 7-3. And coming up tomorrow morning on Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN, Joe Burrow goes one-on-one -on -one with Alex Smith. Plus an all-access inside a mind-blowing meeting with Tom Brady and the Bucks, And then Monday Night Football, the Steelers in Indianapolis to take on Jeff Saturday's Colts at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 Eastern. And if Jeff Saturday keeps on winning, maybe gets hired full-time, it's been nice working with Dan Orlovsky. <laughs> But, of course, the job offer, I'm sure, will be on the table. <laughs> Not only that, but Lane Kiffin's new contract at Ole Miss. Those coaches you'd, are... You'd probably settle for half that. <laughs> yeah. Not that I'm negotiating, Jeff. Yeah, I appreciate it, Bob. <laughs> Glad to help. Stetson's journey, not, not all that different. I mean, then Joe's, right? Joe Burrow goes to Ohio State. You're not good enough to play here. Transfer, then leads probably one of the greatest college football teams in the history of college football. He's having a great NFL career. That'll come out to the 25-yard line for Tech, and we go back to Matt Barrett. All right, guys, here's what's going on around the network. South Carolina, Clemson. Clemson out to an early lead, 14-0 on ABC. West Virginia surprising Oklahoma early in their game. And you've got Coastal Carolina, James Madison, ESPNU. Just out of curiosity, how much does Orlovsky think holding a clipboard would pay in the NFL? You think Saturday is going to give him a gig? <laughs> I like it. I like it. He's back. He's back. By the way, no one holds clipboards anymore. Can we stop saying that? It's not 1994. It's a figure of speech. It's hold a tablet. Hold a tablet sounds yeah. dumb. First and 10, Georgia Tech still with the lead. 18 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Zach Gibson hands one to Hassan Hall. And not much running right. Robert Beal made the stop. And that should take us to the end of the first quarter. Which, by the way, will be only the second time this season that Georgia has trailed after the first quarter. They were down 3-0 to Missouri on October 1st. They're down 7-3 in their rivalry game with Georgia Tech. Some clean, old-fashioned hate. We've had some highlights so far. Nate McCollum putting up big numbers. And Puma Chance touchdown run. The advantage. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. And welcome back to Athens, just about set for the start of the second quarter. As we said, only the second time that Georgia has trailed after a quarter of play this year. Only the fifth time since 2020 that they have trailed after the first quarter. And all five times they've come back to win. Flags down to start the second quarter for Georgia Tech. And it looks like a false start will be called. 
False start on the offense, number two. That's a five-yard penalty, and it remains second down. So Dylan Leonard had a big drop in the first quarter, starts off the second quarter with a penalty. We go down to Chris. Bob, when Brent Key took over, he created a leadership council for his players. There's 15 seniors on it. The idea was to give this team more of a player's voice. And they say they've responded. It's allowed them to get closer, gain confidence, something that they feed off their new interim head coach. Well, his message is registering as they've got two wins against ranked teams since he took over. Gibson, check down. Dante Smith makes a man miss. Gets down the sideline. And it looks like he's got a first down. Keely Ringo got juked out of his shoes by Smith, who picks up 16. And a great check down. Now watch as Smith gets it. He's got him, Ringo, on the sideline. Eager. Make a miss inside and then go down the sideline. What a beautiful move. You know, going back to Chris's report about Brent Key, I thought it was interesting where he, you know, talking about that leadership group, he said it was more important for the team to get their message to him rather than him get his message to the team. And I think that's really empower, empowering, you know, like allowing those players to believe that this is their program, not just the person who's in the head coach's role. Gibson, play action again, back shoulder to the sideline. Carter, did he get a foot down? He did not. Incomplete pass, it'll be second down and 10 as they went right back at Keely Ringo. Well, the message is obviously getting home to this team, there's no doubt. They play hard for him. This is Carter on the go, there's nowhere for him to throw that ball, Gibson. Let's see his feet. Catch is made right now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did he control that all the way to the ground? Looks like he did, no? Well, let's see if replay buzzes down before this next snap. It looks like they may. Bobby, didn't look like his right foot was down as the catch was getting made. Certainly is worth another look. And ruling on the field of a previous play of an incomplete pass is under review. Malachi Carter. Does he have another first down catch? We're about to find out. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Marathon. And while we were away, the call on the field stood. This is an incomplete pass to Malachi Carter, but an outstanding effort, Dan. He made it as close as he possibly could. Yeah, and it's really difficult to see, one, if the toes are just starting to come off as he's just making that catch and or if either of those feet are out of bounds, you know, from that angle. Great effort. So it is second down and 10. Malachi Carter playing in his 58th career game at Georgia Tech as he continues to add to his Yellow Jackets record for most ever games played. Blitz off the edge. They throw the screen behind it. Malik Rutherford immediately cut down by Javon Bullard. A loss of two. Yeah, great job by Bullard recognizing perimeter screen. You saw that pre-snap formation. There's that wide bunch. Trying to go widen and block Bullard. He triggers, stays outside in, and then chops off. Malik Rutherford, very good job. Perfect example of how they play with that leverage. Instead of going underneath, he stays outside. And now it's, again, this third and long situation. This is when Georgia feels we could play our two high coverage, so two safeties deep, man coverage underneath, and allow this dominant defensive line to play with their games and stunts up front. Gibson. Down the sideline, tries to fit it into a tight window to Leo Blackburn. Flags out. Ringo there in coverage. Pass interference on the defense number five. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot and it carries an automatic first down. The shot down the sideline, the go route. Ringo's in great position. I think maybe it's that left arm that just wraps around the chest of Blackburn that they're going to throw. Th that's the fourth ball that they've thrown at Ringo's side that way, where we're going to push the ball downfield to the perimeter and see if you can play that tight man coverage. So they're going to continue to challenge him with those contested throws. Ringo is an NFL defensive back. 100%. But maybe they're throwing at him because he's the one guy they don't give help to. They fake the screen one way, swing it back the other way to Smith. He tight ropes the sideline across midfield, out of bounds. 
at the Georgia 46 yard line for a gain of four. You know, one of the reasons they're throwing at Ringo is, well, a couple reasons. Georgia plays an old school Miami Hurricanes early 2000s defense. Two safeties play deep, corners play man trail underneath. So the coverage is going to be tight. He's usually into the boundary. That's the shortest throw. So it's not like you're going to get a ton of easy open window throws. So you might as well pick the shortest and easiest throw for the quarterback on that contested coverage to, so to try and see if you can get some of those 50-50 opportunity balls. Blitz coming. They pitch it to Smith. Stiff arm. Stretch to the sideline. He may have squeezed out a yard. Kamari Lassiter was there to make contact with Dante Smith first. It will be third down and five. And of course, this is a Georgia defense that held Tennessee who averaged just under 50 a game, number one in America, to 13. They held Oregon to a field goal in the opener. Yeah. The first time that Oregon didn't score a touchdown in a game since 2017. So the points are going to be hard to come by no matter what. Third down and five. Play clock winding down. Five seconds to get it off for Zach Gibson. They do get the snap off. He's well protected to the sideline. High throw, but looked like Malachi Carter stumbled a bit coming out of his break. And now fourth down and six, just across midfield. And Gibson's looking over. Punt the football. And here comes the punt group. Yeah, this is the right choice. You're trying to get that stop route to Carter, and just timing is of the utmost importance on that one. Quarterback's got to hit his back foot, put it on the outside shoulder. Receiver just misses on that one-on-one -on -one ball. So now David Shanahan will kick it to McConkey. Shanahan believed to be the first Irish native awarded a full scholarship in college football. He's part of the Pro Kick Australia school of punting. He tries to spin this one down inside the five. Does it travel into the end zone? Does Georgia Tech get it down? The officials come together. It is in the end zone for a touchback. That close to the Yellow Jackets, downing it at the one-yard line. No doubt about it. And Yana Watson couldn't keep it out. College football rivalry weekend continues tonight with USC holding on to college football playoff hopes. Hosting Notre Dame at the Coliseum. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC, as well as the ESPN app. Notre Dame 8-1 in their last nine since an 0-2 start and have really turned themselves into a quality win again if USC can get it. Right now we've got the Trojans at 14% to reach the college football playoff. That'll jump up to 20% if Ohio State beats Michigan. And right now, Ohio State with the early lead on the Wolverines as well. Kenny McIntosh right up the gut. Into the open field. Caught from behind, breaks a tackle. McIntosh rumbles to the Georgia Tech 35. Before he's brought down, he picks up 45. They're going to get pressure off the edge. This is a beautiful job by George's offensive line. Watch Kenny McIntosh come right down the middle of the field. You blitz, you shut off the slant. It's a great job by that offensive line. Kenny McIntosh had a huge hole. We saw their offensive line coach for Georgia talking about when Georgia Tech pressures, how they were going to handle it. Perfect example. John Edwards right down Broadway as well he's got seven Clayton Powell Lee tripped him up you know one of the things I love about this offensive line again they're Joe Moore award finalists or semifinalists excuse me the strike that they have off the football then they bring their hips you can see their hand placement is always so good and then they keep their head up and that's one of the things I think is a lost art in offensive line blocking is so often younger players are dipping their heads nowadays their offensive line does such a good job of everybody keeping their head up. That allows the vision on their double teams to be exactly where it's supposed to be. John Edwards again. Inside the 20. 
Down to the 10 yard line before he's brought down. 18 more. Yeah, you're going to see down blocks on one side, and then watch this. Down blocks, down blocks, down blocks, and then you're going to pull with your back side left tackle and then your big tight end, Washington. That's McClendon, 300 pounds, pulling with Washington, 270. You collapse one side, and then 570 pounds get pulled from one side to the other. That stresses a defensive front. And see how you got two high safeties here? That's where you should run the ball down in the red zone. And they will to Edwards again. And on first and goal, he pushes the pile for two. It'll be second down and goal. Amari Walton made the tackle. And last time down here, they went run, run, pass on third down. They had Bowers for an opportunity and had the pass interference and or drop. I'd love to see a little bit of a play action here. You got two big tight ends. Washington is 6'7". Use that height difference. Get the defense to have vision in the backfield and see if you can create that matchup. That's Washington in motion. Another handoff. Inside the five-yard line goes Edwards. Charlie Thomas, who's a top-five tackler, along with A.C. Lee. And the ACC made the stop. Those two are tackle machines in the middle of this Georgia Tech defense. Now it's third and goal from just inside the five. You could make the, the argument that Charlie Thomas has the chance to be the ACC defensive player of the year. He's absolutely all over the football field every single game that you watch them play. Well, the two have both gone over 100 tackles on the season, the only FBS duo to do so. And they are right in the heart of everything that Georgia Tech does defensively. McIntosh back in on third down and goal. Instead, Bennett to the air. Into the end zone. Caught in the water. Jackson. Touchdown, Georgia. Second touchdown of the season for Rosamie Jack Saint. And the first pass that Georgia threw on the drive. As Stetson Bennett has his 15th touchdown pass of the season. And the dog's up by three. A great feel by Rosemead Jack Saint. You're going to get Brock Bowers to come in motion, okay? What's going to happen is Georgia Tech defensively is going to in and out it, meaning you take the inside, I take the outside. Watch Jack Saint, see how he's patient and then breaks away. Stetson Bennett put the ball up at the face masker higher. Really good feel for that route running. Use the motion to get information. Ball placement by Stetson Bennett. Jack Saint with a big touchdown. Dogs have the lead between the hedges. But a closer game than anyone would have expected as we are midway through the second quarter. And Georgia Tech back to the offense, down by three. And taking it in the end zone is Hassan Hall. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. In the last 25 seasons, who are the only two SEC quarterbacks with 250 or more passing yards and a rushing touchdown in four consecutive games? Oh, that's a tough one. It's our colleague that played at Florida and won, I don't know, a couple. I think he might be a guy that could be on that list. He'd certainly be my guess as Tyson Pumachon is back in at quarterback to start this drive for Georgia Tech. Zone read and a handoff. About four yards for Jamie Felix. Back to Matt Barry. All right, guys, here's what's going on across the country. South Carolina got on the board 14-7. Clemson on ABC. West Virginia, Oklahoma State tied at seven. Army over UMass on ESPN+. Plus. An official guest from the studio, Cam Newton, 
and Aaron Murray. Best in final. I like that guess. Cam yeah. Newton and Aaron Murray. I mean, Newton was certainly came to mind. Tebow, of course, came to Aaron mind. Aaron Murray, but huh? We are doing a Georgia game. That usually is a tell. Second down and five for Tech. Same play, different result. Felix goes nowhere. Robert Beal, who began playing football in sixth grade because he played basketball. And his quote when asked about that said, look, I fouled out a lot. <laughs> so my best friend's mom said, you know, you might want to try football. Turned out to be a good decision. He stepped in ever since Nolan Smith went down for this defense and has played really good football. A perfect example there. Third down and five. I think this is where you got to try to work this little slot area, Bobby. Bumachuk, quarterback draw with a cutback. He's got the first down. Bumachon has only thrown the ball five times. He made his debut for Georgia Tech last week. Yeah, you're going to speed motion. That's going to bring a linebacker out of the box. It's only going to leave Dumas Johnson, and then you lead that center up to go block him. Really good job utilizing third down, motion the back. You pull one extra defender out of the box. Pumachon peeks up. Your center lead blocks, and that's why it helps to get into that third and four, third and five world. So Zach Gibson on the sideline as Tyson Pumachon who again played for the first time this year last week against North Carolina and at 44 yards rushing and a touchdown. Play clock winding down. They get the play off and Pumachan again. Picks up three. And at the very least, Georgia Tech letting the play clock go as deep as possible, shortening this game. A bunch, right? As we come up on five and a half oh. minutes to go in the opening half. Pumachan has become their, their quarterback run element throw a little bit out of it with him run way more but we talked to Brent Key like how they were going to handle the game and he said we, we got to go try to make good happen can't wait for bad to happen he also said we're going to play the 15 minute blocks like we're going to play the first quarter see where we are then we're going to play the second quarter and reassess after every single 15 minute time frame he's got to love where they sit right now Bumachan another keeper spins lost the football got it back and lost the yard that one almost came apart at the seams for Tyson Pumachan, and that'll bring Zach Gibson back in the game. Third down and eight. Just watch how Georgia's defense leverages the football. See how everyone stays outside, stays outside. That forces the cutback for Pumachan, and that's where all the bad guys are waiting. If you're Tyson Pumachan, a little bobble right there. That's what I talk about leveraging the football. Keep the outside arm free. They do a really good job with it there. What a tough spot for Zach Gibson as well stand on the sideline and then when it's third and eight all right go in there and get this one for us now watch these guys on defense communicate right now with all these motion look at everybody talk hand signal look at it four-man rush flare pass felix and he will maybe get back to the line of scrimmage jamon dumas johnson made the stop actually lost a yard and that'll take us under four minutes to go here in the opening half. Georgia about to get the football back. Yeah, that, that's the thing that I appreciate about Georgia's defense the most is what I was talking about pre-snap there, the communication. When you talk to Kirby Smart, it's the lines of communication. You can't play for Georgia unless you talk on defense. Corner, you have to talk to your near safety. Safety, you got to kick it to a linebacker. They actually have a chart, Bobby, where positional lines are attached to each other. You're expected to talk to this position. In this position, you're expected to talk to that so you can handle all those different shifts and motions throughout the game. Shanahan, line drive, knuckleball. McConkie fields it on a bounce, makes the first man miss. Makes another couple of Yellow Jackets miss. McConkie to midfield before he's finally brought down at the Yellow Jackets 45. That's a six yard change of field position as Keenan Johnson might have saved a touchdown. Ladd McConkey going to get a good bounce his way. I love the patience, the patience, catch the first hop, make the first guy miss, make the second and third guy miss. There's a fascinating player. He's one of those guys that you just got to trust what you see. You know, maybe he doesn't look the part as far as like this physically intimidating player. He's got a little bit of a Cooper Cup look to him. 
But you've got to believe what your eyes tell you. He is one of the more legit receivers in this conference. And he is at the bottom of your screen, widest to the near side left. Take a shot if you're Georgia offensively. Instead, they hand it to Edwards. He breaks a tackle and drags a couple of more tacklers for a first down. Gain of 11 for Dejon Edwards. Zeke Figures brought him down. Look at the vision. Look at the vision. See, everybody's hats are low, but eyes are up for their offensive line. Van Pran, Ratledge, Truss. They all do a really nice job of that. It's the most impressive part of their offensive line. Outside of like the physical domination that they have, even for a young unit, their hats stay low, their hips come. That's why they're constantly playing from in front when it comes to their run game. Conkey in motion. Edwards again. Inside the 30. Out of the 28-yard line, he picks up six. Amari Walton made the stop. And this is a danger moment, you think, in this game for Georgia Tech. Remember, Georgia will start the third quarter with the ball. And with 2.22 to go before halftime, a chance for the Dogs to string together back-to-back -to -back possessions here as Georgia Tech's trying to hang in there. I love this burst of formation. You went from condensed splits. Now you're out wide. You've spread the defense out. You can run the football again. Instead, they'll throw it. A fade down the sideline incomplete behind Dylan Bell. Third down and four. This pass is incomplete intended for Dylan Bell. Certainly seems some miscommunication between Stetson and Dylan Bell. There looked like it was going to be one of those RPOs. He picks up and throws it. Bell a little bit unaware going downfield. I think you're in four down territory right now as you hang on that 28, 29 yard line if you're Georgia. So you can really treat this as a second down play call. Stetson Bennett only has 28 yards passing. Georgia has 122 yards rushing here in the first half. Comes that corner blitz. And they'll try to run for a first down. And they won't get there. And this is fourth down and a full two as Kendall Milton was brought down at the 26-yard line. And Georgia Tech will call a timeout on defense to try and save some time if they can. Do the dogs go for it when we come back? I'm Matt Barry coming up on the Lexus halftime report. Michigan and Ohio State pretty close in Columbus. Highlights of that one plus another great rivalry game between Clemson and South Carolina. Plus Nebraska has its new head coach and they hope they are going to rule. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, just charged myself a dollar coming up on the Lexus halftime report. Matt Barry's good. I see what he did that there. That was well done. I don't mind that well one. Done. You were even impressed. Yeah, I don't know the whole charge you a dollar. If I'm Georgia, I go for this. I love the fact that they are. Fourth and two after the Georgia Tech timeout. And now a look over after the hard count by Stetson Bennett. Still seven on the play clock. Will they snap the ball? Georgia Tech holds their water. Timeout Georgia. Now they may still go for it. It yeah. might be, hey, option A, let's see if we can get them to jump with a hard count. And don't forget, Bobby, if you do that and they don't jump, you can come back in that very same formation. And run Because now you know what they're going to line up if you're Georgia Tech defensively. I mean, you've run the ball relatively well in this first half. You've run it for 124 yards. You've got an offensive line that is a Joe Moore Award semifinalist. You should have a pretty good idea of how Georgia Tech is going to line up to that bunch formation. I still say go be aggressive. You've got the timeout. I don't mind that. Offense stays on the field. And after the initial try for a hard count by Georgia, the Yellow Jackets stay disciplined. Fourth and two. Bowers turns the corner. Has the first down. And that might be a horse collar tackle. Let's see. Zamari Walton helped run him out as he got into the red zone on fourth down. Let's see. Unless Georgia is guilty of a hold on the edge.
Georgia Tech thinks this is a dog's penalty. Personal foul, face mask on the offense number 19. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul, and we will replay fourth down. So not only does that negate the fourth down carry for the first down, but that might knock Georgia out of field goal range. He's, he get, I mean, I get that. He gets inside that face mask. Bobby, why is it not offsetting? Because there's the horse collar as well. When the flag came out and you could see the grab at the back of the jersey near the nameplate, I thought that was what they were going totally. to call. To me, you can make an argument they missed the horse collar Absolutely. but got the face mask. Yeah, I, I think both of those are flags, and you should replay the down rather than just calling it against Georgia. And it is a points-off-the-board type call because now Brett Thorson has to come out to punt as they're out of field goal range. And he'll try and angle this one for the corner. as the gunner to keep it out of the end zone. That's just a remarkable play by Ladd McConkey. You know how difficult this is to find the football, look at everybody's eyes up, long snapper pointing to it. Get up there, big fella. That's a great play by McConkey. That's another one of those examples. You just believe what your eyes tell you when it comes to him. How many legit big time wide receivers are on your punt unit? There was one recruiting service that had Ladd McConkey as the 1,160th player in his recruiting class a, a few miss years on ago. That one, Bob. Yeah, maybe by about a thousand. <laughs> Let's go down to Chris. Yeah, he didn't receive an offer from Georgia until 16 days from signing day. When we asked Kirby what he saw in him, he said, when I first took a look at him, he looked like the guy that should be delivering my newspaper. He eventually grew on us. He was going to go to Chattanooga if he didn't come to Georgia. It worked out. And now Georgia Tech from their own two-yard line. Gibson to throw from the end zone. A quick out to the sideline. Jenkins able to make the catch. Bumped out by Ringo. And that gives the Yellow Jackets some breathing room. A gain of six. Yeah, really big 90 seconds here if you're Georgia Tech. If you told them they were going to go in 10-7 at half down, you'd take that. So how well of a job they do of making sure that they hold on to the football for the remainder of this first half is going to be paramount. Second down. I'd love to see a little bit of a perimeter run or perimeter screen to see if you can get into a really good third down situation, if not a first. Play action again. A deep throw down the sideline again, and it's there! E.J. Jenkins all the way out near midfield before he's brought down. He ran past Malachi Starks. They brought corner pressure for Georgia defensively. Now you're one-on-one -on -one with the safety stutter and go. Gibson, a beautiful throw over the side. What a great connection. Anticipate the pressure, answer it with the throw. A gain of 41, and now Georgia Tech in business. Gibson, sideline throw again, reaching up to make an incredible one-handed catch was Jenkins, but he didn't get a foot down. How about that effort? There's that contested sideline throw right at Ringo. Jenkins gets his right arm out there. Now it bobbles it. Yeah, by the time he had control, he was airborne and headed out of bounds. So second down and 10. Yellow Jackets still with two timeouts, as do the Dogs. Minute 10 to go in the half, and maybe Replay wants to take another look to make sure that Jenkins was out of bounds. Let's see. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. That play is under video review. Jenkins was in when he first got a hand on the football. But you'll see it come off of his hand, and he does not have complete control of it. So that foot being in, he just doesn't have the football yet. I don't know. I, I get what you're saying initially, Bobby, but that right foot stays on. This would be a great angle. So it's not there. He right foot's not down it. yet. He's got it now. Now he's got it, ah. and his feet are in the air. No, his right foot's down right there, right here. That right foot is down. Now, are they saying that that is possession? 
Does the ball move once he pins it to his chest? I don't think he had complete control of it with a foot on the ground. I, I think I probably tend to agree because it's called an incompletion. Right foot still down. Yeah, I, I, I think it's because it's an incompletion on the call. I don't think, I think you're going to confirm that call. It's a great effort. No doubt, and it's close. After review, the ruling on the field of incomplete pass stands. It'll be second down. That's the second one for Georgia Tech today that is very close on the sideline. Yeah, they've made two of the best catches you will see that are <laughs> barely out of bounds, as Malachi Carter had one earlier as well. Second down and 10. Interesting to see how both teams manage the clock with a couple of timeouts each. As well, a lot could be determined based on what happens on this snap. Scrambling and getting the first down and more is Gibson. He picks up 13. Chaz Chambliss missed a tackle on Zach Gibson. And I don't think you need to play crazy fast if you're Georgia Tech right now. You can continue to take time at the line of scrimmage. Gibson, well protected to the sideline and complete. Ringo jumped the route and he knocked it away. E.J. Harris, the intended receiver. Yeah, you're trying to high low the corner. Gibson pushes it to the sideline. Ringo just a step late. Dangerous throw. It's really important right now. Zach Gibson's done such a great job. That's Zion Logue, the big nose tackle for Georgia. Down and injured after that last play. So while there is an injury timeout, let's answer our AFLAC trivia question. Aflac. In the last 25 seasons, who are the only two SEC quarterbacks with 250 plus passing yards and a rushing touchdown in four consecutive uh, games? I guess I'm Tim going, Tebow. Before. I'm going Tebow and Stetson Bennett. Wow, oh, you've looked at the card. That's cheating. I didn't look at the card. Just absolute cheating. Wait, I'm right. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Let's go. And how happy does it make you that the guys in the studio oh, got both I'm so both happy wrong. I didn't say Cam Newton. And did he say Greg McElroy? Is that what Barry <laughs> yeah, said? Yeah, Greg McElroy. Golly, dude. <laughs> Guy says he knows college football. <laughs> Second down and 10. As Stetson Bennett was hoping to get another chance with the football before halftime after Lad McConkey downed a punt at the two-yard line. And how about the response again by Georgia Tech? to not only get the ball out of the shadow of their own goalpost, but to be in position to score before halftime. They'll run it with Dante Smith, and Dante Smith is planted for a loss of a couple. Jalen Carter was in the backfield. Robert Beal there as well. Now it's third down at 12. Bobby, this is special by Jalen Carter. You're going to see this tackle pull, okay? Now watch Carter as he pulls. Follow him right there. See? See how he follows him? That is spectacular. Tackle leaves. You follow him because you know he's pulling for a reason. A little bit of a jersey grab right there. And you're talking about a physical talent in Jalen Carter that's going to be a top 10 pick in the NFL. He could go upfield. He could two gap. He could rush the passer. He's got speed, power, explosive. Athleticism and then smarts right there. Big time play. An MCL sprain cost Jalen Carter a good portion of the season, but after missing a couple of games, he returned four games ago, and he's become Jalen Carter again since yeah. coming back. You know, it'll be interesting because Georgia Tech has had so many of these throws to the sideline, right? Bob, these one-on-one -on -one contested, somewhat back shoulder fades. I'd be interested to see at what point does Georgia start to play these safeties just a little bit wider, and then can you get a ball down the middle of the field in between the hashes? One timeout left for Georgia Tech. And they can get very close to field goal range without picking up the first half. Wheel route, nothing there. Dumas Johnson rifles over and buries Dante Smith. Now you wonder if Georgia might call a timeout.
I would. I'm not sure Kirby Smart knew that that pass was completed. And he looked up and saw the clock kept running. And so then called a timeout. So both teams have one left. And you'd have to think this is going to be a punt for Georgia Tech. Tomorrow, pair of men's college basketball title games for you. The first at the Phil Knight Legacy Championship, Duke Purdue at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. And the second, the Phil Knight Invitational Championship, Iowa State and Dance Puppies at 10 Eastern on ESPN. Both games are available on the ESPN app. UConn back ranked where they ought to be as Man. a Big East basketball team again. Danny Hurley has them boys playing. They look like old school UConn, which is fun. True freshman from Connecticut balling. So 35 seconds to go on the half. They put a couple of extra seconds back up for Georgia after their timeout was called, but Georgia Tech could not get in field goal range. So Shanahan will punt again. And this is 100% a punt for Georgia Tech. The two things, if you're Georgia, is there a punt block that you love? If so, this is when you dial it up. If not, do you give McConkey the chance to be, to set up to have an ideal return? Shanahan just blasts it into the end zone, so it come out to the it will come out to the 20 yard line with 28 seconds to go before halftime. And this season, all state will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you to all state. So 28 seconds mm -hmm. at your own 20 yard line against a defense by the way that has taken the ball away 23 times this season i don't get too cute here yeah, georgia tech is number five in america in most takeaways at plus 11 on the season sure and you're starting the third quarter with the ball and you can see kirby smart is going to take yep. no chances smart thing to do go to halftime reassess maybe you get your team's attention a little bit credit georgia tech they have played a heck of a first half so clean, old-fashioned hate with a terrific first 30 minutes. As the Dogs will start the third quarter with the ball. And a three-point lead. A quiet first half for Stetson Bennett. Five of ten for 28 yards. Did have the touchdown hookup with Marcus Rosamy jack Saint, And right now, that is the margin. As that gave Georgia the lead. And Georgia Tech and their quarterback Zach Gibson hang in there in the second half and keep the hopes of an upset alive. We'll find out. Down to Chris. Coach, up three and a half. What have you seen out of your team early? I couldn't hear you. What have you seen out of your team early? Well, I see them shrinking the game a little bit. They're doing a nice job. They hit us with an opening drive. Um, we've wasted a couple red area series where we got to get touchdowns out of those. You were talking with Stetson Bennett running into the halftime for the locker room. What was the message to him? Play with some confidence and, you know, use our players to help us. we got several times there where we got an opportunity to run the ball. we got to run the ball and be more physical. Appreciate it. Thank you. A three-point margin in a rivalry game at halftime. Back to Matt Barry. It's time for the halftime report. Big game, Bob. Thank you so much. We Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Marathon. This is the SEC on ESPN. Just about set for the start of the third quarter. Georgia will start the third quarter with the football and the lead. That's not surprising, but the margin? Very surprising as clean old fashioned hate, way more competitive hmm. than we may have expected. Bob Shoes and Dan Orlovsky, Chris Budden is with us as well. Georgia Tech really impressed you in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, they played a very similar style to what Kentucky tried last week against Georgia. A little NFL. They ran 40 plays. Georgia Tech ran, or excuse me, Georgia ran 26. So Georgia Tech, credit for the style and the execution. And then if you're Georgia, a little bit more of a wake up and urgency. You're not going to get a ton of opportunities in the second half. Every single play is going to matter. And again, Georgia will start the second half with the football. And they'll have pretty good field position, just shy of their own 30 on the Pierre's Jackson return. As we take a look at today's road test, brought to you by Goodyear. Yeah, the Georgia Tech defense had a very clear plan. They were going to try to make life for Stetson Bennett as difficult as possible. Put a lot of bodies all over him, blitzing him off the edges. And then 
Offensively, they started really hot. Fourth down, they stayed aggressive, shit the shot to Nate McCollum from the inside slot fade, and then they flip the quarterbacks. Pumachan comes in, and they go to that designed quarterback run. That was by far their best drive of the day, but it's the story of their defense and how much they've confused and threatened Georgia's run game. Kenny McIntosh had a big first half, 59 yards on the ground, and he'll start the second half off with a gain of four as we go down to Chris. He was just happy trailing by three heading into the half. You got a different story. Caught up with him after halftime. He had one short message for his team. It was, we didn't come here to play good. We came here to win. Well, their confidence is building as they've already got a couple of wins on the road against ranked opponents under Coach Key. And we have a player injury as we will step aside. Looks like Keon White is down. Well, right over the shoulder of the visiting team here at Sanford Stadium is the Taco Bell Live Ma student section. Student sections across the country competing to be the Live Ma student section of the year all season long. A big reason why Georgia is so dominant at home and Keon White a moment ago went into the injury tent. He was the ACC defensive lineman of the week. Three sacks and four tackles for loss last week in the win over North Carolina. And right now he's off the field on second down as Kenny McIntosh dives up the middle for three more. So here's third down and three down with the best pass rusher and the most impactful defensive player last week for the Yellow Jackets being looked at on the sideline. And massive third down opportunity for Georgia Tech's defense. This is a defense that so far today has not given up much in the past game. They've given up one or two chunk runs to McIntosh in this third and three, third and four world. You got to anticipate seeing man coverage and if you're Georgia trying to get people receiver wise running away from their defenders. Akanki in motion on third down. Georgia Tech brings a blitz. They throw behind it wide open. McIntosh down the sideline. Perfectly read by Stetson Bennett and a third down conversion. Charlie Thomas made the stop, but the dogs move the chains. They pick up 12. Really good job by Stetson Bennett. Seeing the edge pressure, replacing that pressure with your tailback, ball to your hands for a catchable pass. And now they go with the NASCAR tempo. McIntosh dives up the middle and drives his way for three. Hit by Charlie Thomas again. When Charlie Thomas and Ace Ely, it really it, probably two of the smartest linebackers in all the country. When Charlie Thomas, I mentioned in the first half, Bobby, he could be in the conversation for ACC Defensive Player of the Year. He's one of two guys since the year of 2000 to have a season of 100 more tackles, 10 and a half more tackles for loss, two plus sacks, two plus interceptions, two plus forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. I mean, we're talking about a guy that has had tremendous season, both those linebackers, very strong players. Jet sweep. McConkey cuts it back, has the first down, making players miss. Down to the 33. 14 yards on the end around to Lad McConkey. He made Sims miss. Now watch Bowers lead on that corner. Just look at the feel and the patience by McConkey, right? Never out of balance, never out of control. That is how he has that a quick ability to make those sudden cuts. The sophomore from Georgia, just a really good player as you see Keon White coming back in the game, but changes tempo in his route so well if you're Lad McConkey, You know, if you talk about him and Brock Bowers, defensive coordinator Andrew Thacker for Georgia Tech right there has a lot to deal with. And off Milton. Kendall Milton. Bobbing and weaving his way for five. Yeah, Bob, you're going to get McClendon right there for Georgia. Just an absolute late hit on the pile. After the play was over, personal foul on the offense number 70, late hit. 15-yard penalty from the seating spot. The down counts. It's second down. That's a huge call. Mm. Watch 70 come in late here. You think that's because of the shot to the back or just it's a fraction late? 
or both. And it, that didn't feel egregiously late to me. Pick your poison. <laughs> That'll make it second down to 20. Four man rush. Tunnel screen to Bowers. To the 37 yard line. That's a gain of only five. Zeke Biggers tripped him up. So third down and 15 now for Georgia. And not in field goal range here. Again, this is where Stetson Bennett and his experience comes into play. You make the point, Bob. Not in field goal range yet, but third and 15. If you feel like you got to try to force this ball downfield, that's not the decision. If you get seven or eight yards, then it becomes a decision for Kirby Smart. Kick a field goal or be aggressive on fourth down. Kick the ball to the perimeter. You got one-on-one. -on -one. Might be a free play. Looked like they jumped. So it's a lob down the sideline for McConkey. Knocked out of bounds by Powell Lee, but it was offside Georgia Tech in the neutral the zone. The snap. the defense number nine. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Free play, third down. Stetson Bennett knew he had a free play and simply hoisted one up. So now it will be third down and ten. And now they are in field goal range. And now this changes everything play call-wise because third and 15, you might be thinking, may screen, let's just see if we can get eight or nine yards. Now you're thinking, all right, where's our call that we we feel Georgia Tech's going to be in their too high shell defense, and how can we attack in between those hashes with our pass catchers? No sack if you're Stetson Bennett. Cannot hold on to the football in the pocket. Defensive coordinator Andrew Thacker barking out signals to his defense, hoping to get a third down stop. Yellow Jacket show blitz. They'll rush only four. Bennett, he's going to take a shot down to the end zone. and went out of bounds as the official says it complete. Did Arian Smith have complete control of the football before tumbling out of bounds? Certainly worth another look. Great adjustment, ball to the belly. I mean, there is a little bit of a gather on the football there. It's a great shot right here. Doesn't have it, doesn't have it, doesn't have it. I think it's a good call. I, I think, think by the left time, knee, right? By the time he brought it back in and fully controlled it, his knee hits the sideline. Doesn't have it, doesn't have it, doesn't have it. Now has it, and that left knee looks like it touches out first. Very close. If he catches it clean, then I think he's in, but I don't think he catches it clean. I think that initial ball getting into his belly. I mean, Chris has no emotion in the back corner there. Come on. <laughs> Again, ruled incomplete on the field. So you would have to see indisputably that Arian Smith had complete control of the football and landed in bounds in order to turn this play the other way and make it a Georgia touchdown. I mean, the question is if it stays as ruling on the field, what does Georgia do then? Well, Jack Podlesny's career long is 53. So he's inside of that. It'd be and about 50. From right here, I would say 50 to 51. So it's inside his range. Right. And you would think with their defense, even if they were to miss, yep. I'm not sure that Kirby Smart's worried about giving up field position with the best defense in college football. Let's see what decision he is going to have to make. The rolling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. Well, the crowd doesn't like it, but. I think they got it right. Yeah, I, I just think again that initial bobble really forces that left knee to touch down first out of bounds. And it will be a field goal attempt for Podlesny to try and stretch the lead to six. And it looks like it'll be just a shade under 51. He is a terrific kicker. Former walk-on. Put on scholarship last year from 51 yards away to try and stretch the lead. 
It's got plenty of distance, and it is right down the middle. The dogs settle for three. The crowd was hoping Arian Smith would be given a touchdown as that little bobble and the land out of bounds cost Georgia four. But Pud Lesney able to stretch the lead. The college football playoff semifinals and the college football playoff national championship on ESPN. Sunday, December 4th, ESPN will have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups for the Fiesta and Peach Bowls to be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. Recently, the guys will also unveil the New Year's Six Bowl games and have the final top 25 rankings in a four-hour special. All starts noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, after Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN and the app. Take a look at our college football playoff rankings brought to you by Capital One. Right now, Georgia in a tussle with Georgia Tech. And what happens between Ohio State and Michigan? As close as that game is, if it stays that close, would the loser stay in the top four? Would there be a door open for an LSU, a USC, to maybe get into the top four? Or if Ohio State and Michigan, Dan, still look like two of the best four teams in America against each other. There could be some interesting discussions in that room on December 4th. And I think it, a lot what happens behind them becomes part of that conversation as well. Sure. The USC went out. Does TCU lose it all? That's part of it. Dante Smith with a cutback. Four yards on first down. Dumas Johnson again made the stop. How good is this offensive line for Georgia Tech been? They haven't been dominant, but we're talking about playing against the defense that's the best in the country. You know, Corey Robinson, Pierce Quick, Franklin, Jordan Williams, Leftwich. It's a very young group going against top 10 picks in the NFL draft, and they have absolutely held their own with what they've been asked to do. Gibson over the middle, dropped. Wide open, P.J. Harris. That's another tight end drop. Dylan Leonard had a big one in the first half, third down at six. I mean, this is at easily a first down, if not 15-plus yard gain. Cleared out the coverage. Ball's a little bit on the back hip. You'd love to see Harris catch it. You mentioned the Leonard drop. That's two big drops that are going to be 50 yards of offense for this Georgia Tech group. The Ramblin' Rex scored a touchdown on their opening drive. No points since. Two for seven on third down. Gibson to the sideline, way short of the first down. Even if the catch is made, which it was by McCollum, he's got no chance to get anywhere near the line to green as Ringo bumped him out, and it will be a three and out. It's a credit to Ringo. I mean, they're really motioning that back, Bob, to create the middle of the field kind of void, and they gave McCollum a choice route, and Ringo just kept leverage inside, never gave him the chance to get there and forced that little throw to the out. Now one yard down and out on third down and six against this defense is not going to get it done. And now it looks like Georgia might be coming after David Shanahan. So Tech tightens it up and Shanahan drops the snap and Georgia will drop him in the red zone. Snaps just a little bit low. Shanahan tries to go field it. And then Georgia converges. What a turn of events. A snap just a little bit low for Shanahan. Henry Freer, the long snapper. Got it down around his ankles, and Shanahan couldn't scoop it up. So that goes as a stop on downs, but it's basically a turnover. 
as Georgia will now start at the 17-yard line of Tech. Bennett on a rollout. Up against the sideline. Has to throw it away. Good coverage in the secondary for the Yellow Jackets. Jason Moore was there to run Bennett to the sideline. Great job coverage-wise for Georgia Tech. They, for the most part, have covered up Georgia's pass game. I mean, Stetson Bennett has thrown for 46 yards on 14 attempts. Brock Bowers has three catches for nine yards. So Georgia Tech defensively, Andrew Thacker, their defensive coordinator, came into the game, said, we think we can cover them if we get them to passing situations. That's held true today. Talking to Kirby Smart yesterday, he had all kinds of wonderful things to say about Andrew Thacker and the job he thinks Coach Thacker has done with this defense. McIntosh stood up at the 15-yard line after a gain of two. Georgia does not have a passing play that's traveled more than 13 yards so far in the game. They have been held in check by this Georgia Tech defense, and now after sudden change, a chance for the Ramblin' Wreck to get a stop in the red zone on third down. I mean, Brock Bowers is the only guy who has multiple catches. You know, mentioned Stetson Bennett's 14 attempts. Those are seven completions. Browers has three. A flare to Kenny McIntosh for 13 yards. See, is the longest completion that Georgia has. Those two guys, Bowers and McConkie, got to take advantage of the shell coverage. Stetson Bennett looks that way. Here comes the pressure. He throws one, and it is caught! Bowers inside the 10, down to the 5. Bennett waited for the slant to come open, and he hit his big tight end for 10. They're going quick on first and goal. McIntosh at the 3-yard line. He's tripped up. Charlie Thomas with an ankle tackle. Bobby, watch the right side, OK? Stetson Bennett's going to move, 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 and then he's going to place it out in front of Bowers. Bowers ran what we call a whip route. He pushes up, then he breaks to the out, then snaps back inside. He allows the coverage to be lifted off, go deeper, and he's really like a check down on his route. Big deal is patience on it. He displayed that. Beautiful route. Man, I'd love to see this to the back corner. Play fake. Bennett, quarterback keeper at the goal line. Short. He got inside the one. But the officials said he did not break the plane. He made Trenilius Tatum miss. And now lining up quickly to go for it. Bennett with Edwards to his right. And the play stopped. field is that the runner was down. Prior to the snap, there was notification from replay that the play is under video review. So the replay booth stopping to see if Bennett broke the plane. If he is ruled to have been short, that robs Georgia of what they wanted to do, which was to go quick. But he might have gotten in. Golly, that is close, man. I don't think either knee I think that's a touchdown. Right, his knees aren't down, the left elbow isn't down. And it looks like his knees are airborne and the ball lands on the goal line. This is that glass half full, glass half empty moment for Georgia because if they don't get the touchdown, they wanted to go up at the one foot line and quick speed, snap it sure. and try and hammer it into the end zone before Georgia Tech could get set. And it looked like they may have but the play blown dead at the line by the replay booth checking to see if Bennett scrambled in. Knees are not down, left elbow is not down, right elbow is... Oh my goodness. I mean, is it another one where the ruling on the field, it's hard to overturn it? I think the first body part that hit the ground the that right he, elbow. he was down is his ball-carrying elbow, exactly the right elbow. Where is the ball in relation to the goal line when that elbow touches? After review, the ruling on the field stands, third down. So the Georgia sideline thought it was a touchdown. They can't believe it. The play stands, and that at least gives Georgia Tech a chance to line up and be organized for the third down and goal play. 
I, mean, I don't think this is a overly complicated play call. You're definitely going for it on third and fourth down if you don't get it. It's really one of two things. It's quarterback sneak with Stetson Bennett, or you just get downhill on a handoff to, you know, Milton, who's 220 pounds, or McIntosh, right between your guard and center. Third down and goal, inches short of the goal line. Ajon Edwards to the left of Bennett. Bennett on a keeper. A little stutter step. Did he lose the football? Is he short as well? The officials said he came down inside the one yard line, short of the goal line. Georgia Tech, I thought, knocked the ball out. No, they'll say Bennett has it. Fourth down and goal. Ace Ely made the tackle. Zone read. Does he get in as he reaches this ball out? Yeah. Unless he's down before that ball crosses the plane. What a great effort. I don't want him in the shotgun. Well, now it's fourth down and goal inside the one. Eye formation. Hit Milton is now the eye back. Play action. Bennett into the end zone. Under throw. Scooped up by Bowers. Touchdown. Hit. Bowers took it right off the top of the grass, oh, and it was ruled a completion and a touchdown on the field. Does the ball touch the ground? Have to think replay will stop play once again to take a look at this. His hands are not underneath the ball, right? They're on the sides of the ball. It's not all that different than Hunter Henry won on Thanksgiving night in New England. Again, the ball can touch the ground. Can't move. If in the opinion of the officials, you have complete control of the ball before it touches the ground. So I now, think if he's making the catch as the ball touches the ground, that's an incomplete pass. So to me on that one, I think he has complete control. And while the ball, I believe, touches the ground, it never moves and nor allows control of the football by him. I think that's a catch. And it looks like it's already been confirmed by the replay booth. That's a remarkable catch by Brock Bowers, man. Wow. <laughs> that's an incredible catch. Bennett pulled the string, and Bowers bailed him out. And the extra point is good. And it's now a 13-point lead for Georgia with under six minutes to go in the third. A lot just happened inside the five-yard line there. A seven-play, 17-yard touchdown drive. Of course, it was the special team's gaff by Georgia Tech that opened the door for Georgia. Just enough for Brock Bowers. Welcome back, Brock Bowers with the catch of the day here in Athens. When I was talking with Stetson Bennett earlier in the week, I said, what makes him so good? He goes, it's his hands. It's unbelievable. I can put the ball wherever I want, and somehow he's in position, and his hands just wrap around the ball. When we watch film, I'm truly shocked by it every time. Let's head back to Matt Barry. All right, guys, Ohio State and Michigan continue to go back and forth. J.J. McCarthy's caught fire. Since the first quarter, 7 of 10, 206 yards, three touchdowns. This to Colston Loveland, the freshman tight end. Michigan regains the lead. Well, tight ends making big plays all over college football. And, Dan, we've had Michael Mayer games with Notre Dame. Sure. Brock Bowers, you think the best tight end in college football, pound for pound? Yeah, I do. I, I love Michael Mayer, his contested catch ability and his blocking is really good, but Brock Bowers, the ability to chew up grass, uh, his route running is like a wide receiver. 
his hands, to Chris's point, are you know as consistent and as reliable. Felix may have lost the ball. A takeaway for the Georgia defense. And a late flag thrown right in front of the Georgia bench. That was well after the play was over. That looks like a sideline infraction is going to be called for the reaction to the takeaway by the Georgia sideline. But the dogs are going to get the football. And Tech right now making mistakes you cannot make. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Georgia for a first down. Sideline warning against Georgia. That is their first of the game. So the muffed snap from Henry Freer, the long snapper, to David Shanahan, the punter, gives Georgia the ball in the red zone. And then Jamie Felix, the true freshman running back, coughs it up. Beal recovers. And back-to-back -back possessions for Georgia start deep in Tech territory. Was that Dumas like, Johnson that like put Dumas his helmet Johnson on it? Yeah. That caused the fumble. Are they going to go back to the guy we were just talking about, Brock Bowers? Who, yeah, is the best tight end in America. Man, you're in a great situation to take a shot to the front pylon in play action. Instead, it's a handoff to McIntosh. Five yards. Zamari Walton tripped him up. I, I want to go back to Bowers, though, with that conversation, Bob. I will say this. that I think the thing that has been so impressive, you talk about the recruitment during the COVID year. He's sending workout videos to Kirby and his staff, you know, running up a hill in Napa, California. And I think the thing that probably is so impressive about him as a young player is his ability to do everything. You know, he's not just a one-trick pony. You can get him the ball in multiple different ways and put him in places formation-wise all over the field. Another handoff to McIntosh, and he is thrown back by Zeke Biggers. Now, the clock in the stadium is running. Ours was frozen on the screen, but it's under five minutes to go in the quarter. And you mentioned it, Dan. Here are the videos that during COVID, Brock Bowers trying to get recruited when you couldn't go out and recruit a player with some of these workout videos to the Georgia coaching staff. And I think that, like, is a perfect example because you ask Kirby, you know, what is the flaw of the organization and or program and what's the most important thing recruiting-wise that you're Georgia and you've become the pinnacle. And he said, we recruit the intangibles more than ever. I think that's a perfect example of that. Like, this kid, the obsession with the craft and the work ethic behind it. Bennett to throw on third down, lobs it left, and the ball charged free. And they'll say incomplete pass. Edwards had it, but he was popped by Miles Sims. It'll be fourth down and three. And that will bring Podlesny out for a field goal attempt. Great shot by Sims. Right side of the screen. Bah! Right on the hip. Doesn't go high. Doesn't go low. They're trying to dump the ball off to Edwards. A little bit of a man beater. Georgia Tech playing zone coverage. Sims has got eyes on it. Now is replay going to take a look and see if this was a fumble or Miles Sims still injured? That is what it is. It was clearly an incomplete pass as you have to get two feet down, put the ball away, and make a football move. And he barely got the second foot down. That's clo another close one. So a 36-yard field goal attempt for Podlesny. And a great job by the Georgia Tech defense after the fumble to hold to only a field goal attempt and keep the game within reach. Podlesny good again. But with 4-11 to go in the third quarter, Georgia Tech, after giving up 10 points, in short order, trying to stay in the game tomorrow. You can catch two women's basketball championship games. The first, the Phil Knight Legacy Championship, UConn and Iowa at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on ABC. While the second game, the Phil Knight Invitational Championship, has North Carolina and Iowa State at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Both are available on the ESPN app. You know, now for Georgia Tech offensively, you see Zach Gibson there with quarterback coach Chris Wenke. You know, where does the offense come from? They started the game with a beautiful drive. They go right down the field, score, and it's kind of been stalled ever since then. 
Is it back to those perimeter throws where they're just giving those one-on-one -on -one options to receivers? Are they going to try to get, you know, McCollum touched the ball a bunch early on. They haven't really gotten the ball in his hands since early in that first half. That's someone that needs to get more touches for this offense. Well, Dan, if folks have been watching since all the way back in the first half, the second possession, the Dylan Leonard drop for Georgia Tech. To me, the game changed on mm -hmm, that drop. Mm -hmm. I agree. As Rutherford calls for a fair catch. As we bring you the weekend wake up brought to you by Wendy's Breakfast. And on this rivalry weekend, other games to tell you that are on the way. The Oregon Oregon State game gets underway at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. LSU knocking on the door of the college football playoff tonight in College Station. And of course, Notre Dame and USC, that rivalry matchup on ABC at 7.30 Eastern. You know, Bobby McCollum in the first drive had three catches for 49 yards or three touches. Ever since then, he's got two. If they've got any shot to get back in this football game, it'll be because he's getting the ball a lot more. Gibson, swing pass. Dante Smith across the 30. Picks up seven to the 32. Smile Munden made the, the tackle. And Georgia Tech has not been inside the Georgia 38-yard line since their opening drive when they scored. Now, of course, if Dylan Leonard hadn't dropped the ball on possession number two, they sure. would have been well inside the 38-yard line. They probably would have been in the red zone with a chance to take a two-score lead early. Gibson dodges the rush and goes down. Lost a yard. So that should go as a sack as Mundin again forced him, and Tyke Smith was there to bring him down. I mean, we call this a cross dog blitz. You're going to see Mundin go here, and then Dumas Johnson wait, be patient, and then go. You take the center and there. Now he's got this seam to get in between the tailback, and that guard can't get backside to him. That's why that cross dog. Blitz is so good. I love the timing out of that between those two young linebackers. That was the first sack of the game. Third down and four. Play clock winding down. Gibson trying to get his team lined up. Play clock at three. Four-man rush. He throws into traffic and squeezes it in to McCollum for the first down. The tightest of windows, and Nate McCollum picks up six. Bobby, it's a little bit of an out route. This is a great job by ball placement by Gibson, and then watch how tight, tough McCollum is. That corner's driving on it. Is that Kamari Lasseter driving on it? McCollum's got to hang in there on contact. That's a tough throw, tough catch by McCollum. And around. Ryan King goes nowhere. Lost a couple of yards, maybe three, back inside the 35. Munden made the stop. These linebackers, we've talked about them a little bit. Dumas Johnson is a Butkus semifinalist. You know, Kirby Smart called him their intellectual leader. And Smile Munden is third on their team in tackles. And really, as smart as they are, as well as they communicate, they are destructive players. Well, Munden was the number one outside linebacker recruit in America, according to our ESPN 300 last season, and living up to that advanced billing. They fake the toss. Gibson, long throw to the sideline. Broken up. Tried to squeeze one into Dylan Leonard, and there were three dogs in the way. Keely Ringo was there. Malachi Starks as well. There's a lot of people on this throw from Gibson. You're really trying to flood one area or kind of vacate one area and replace with that tight end Leonard. It's very similar to the ball that he dropped before going down the seam. This time they try to cross the field. Georgia Tech three for nine on third down, but third and 13 against this defense. It's a whole different task. Four-man rush under pressure, and he dumps it off underneath. Ringo there to break it up. And Georgia Tech will have to kick it away. 
Just Bio beating one on one. And then Ringo staying in that back pocket. And then the left hand goes in and there's shallow cross. But that's all about the pressure. You know, it's interesting for a defense that gives up 11 points a game. They do not have a ton of interceptions. And they do not have a ton of quarterback sacks. So you would think a defense as dominant as Georgia's thrives in both those areas. But it's really that play. Pressure the quarterback a little bit and play tight coverage. Another low snap. Shanahan gets away a line drive. McConkie lets it bounce, and it will roll inside the five. Will it reach the goal line? It will not. To the two-yard line. It didn't look good at the start, but it worked out as well as could possibly be hoped for. For Shanahan, a 65-yard punt back to Matt. It's like a Dan Orlovsky drive. Doesn't start out good, but it rolls just enough to get him some distance. Will Shipley creating distance with South Carolina. Touchdown run there, but here comes Spencer Rattler and the Gamecocks. They will not go away. Here's 75 yards to Antoine Wells. Right now, the safety is the difference. 30 to 28, Clemson still on top. This is a game that Georgia Tech led 7-0 to begin. They haven't scored since, but it is still a two-possession game. And again, the Georgia Tech defense is top five in the country in the giveaway-takeaway ratio. Brock Bowers on the carry, just trying to create some breathing room. And some late contact on the pileup. Zamari Walton in there on the stop for Georgia Tech as we're under a minute to go in the third quarter. I mean, that... <laughs> By rule, that should be a flag. And they threw it on McClendon before. McClendon's was a more impactful hit, but you're not supposed to do that if you're Zamari Walton per the rule. He only weighs 185 pounds, though. <laughs> so that's how they determine whether to throw the flag? <laughs> flag? One yard gain. Second down and nine. Right, on what might be the final play of the third quarter. Play clock down to two. They get the snap off. Give it to McIntosh. And he comes up just shy of the five-yard line, and that should take us to the end of the third. So Georgia with a two-score lead after three. Georgia Tech trying to get a stop defensively deep in Dogs territory. Brock Bowers extended the lead with that touchdown scoop. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. The scenes of fall here in Athens. Perfect day to watch a football game. And the Governor's Cup on the line between Georgia Tech and Georgia. And for the Ramblin' Wreck to have any chance at that trophy, you have to think they need a stop here to create a short field for their offense. Start the fourth quarter with third down and six deep in Georgia's own end. And off Edwards, moves the pile, gets an extra push, and easily has the first down. Still on his feet, grinding out yards with flags everywhere out close to the 20-yard line. the runner on the offense number zero five yard penalty from the spot of the foul the yardage still results in a first down so they take a few yards away from Georgia for Darnell Washington giving an illegal push to Edwards actually an illegal pole which you're not allowed to do and he's helping him along but it's still a first down and a third down and six run at that. Man, I was surprised that Georgia just came out and ran it. And I don't know if that's because they felt good about it or they don't feel great about their pass game right now. They hustle back up to the line. Bennett, off play action, looking downfield. Deep one, down the left sideline, drops it in! There goes Kenny McIntosh! 
McIntosh inside the 10, out of bounds. It'll be goal to go with a flag throw. Collar tackle on the defense number 20. That penalty will be a force half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. You're going to go post, clear it out, and here's McIntosh that's going to run the wheel route. Ball fake. That the defense clears out. Look at these defenders have vision back. McIntosh runs by him. Stetson Bennett puts it over the top. What an aggressive play call by Todd Monken, their offensive coordinator. You clear out the coverage with the post. Hit the tailback on the ball fake rail route. And then there at the end, there's that horse collar. Run the ball on third down and long, and then come right back on first down and take your shot in the play action. McIntosh caps it. Touchdown, dogs. Kenny McIntosh changes the game. The longest pass play of the season for Georgia. 83 yards set it up. As Stetson Bennett, 139 yards passing, 83 on one play. And McIntosh with the wheel route catch. And his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. You know, Bobby, right after the third quarter ends, right? That's what leads into that third down play call. That's them on the sidelines as a Georgia coaching staff talking about that, saying, hey, let's run it on third down here. And if we get it, let's get to the line of scrimmage quickly, and then let's take that play action shot. That is coaching at its absolute best. Credit Kirby Smart, Smart and Todd Monken on that one. And now Georgia pulls away a three-score lead. And Dan, you called it. The wheel route worked to perfection. I love the timing of it. They come out of the end of quarter, punch in the third down run, and then they take their shot to McIntosh. Hit a big play, and then they pound it right behind their big offensive line. Georgia up big at home. They did drop a flag out on the point after attempt. So and I just gave we you a great break, read, Bob. The result of the play is that the try is good after the play was over. Personal foul on the kicking team, number 59, got to the face. A 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. So that penalty on Georgia, but still a 30-7 lead. ESPN College Football is presented by Marathon. Get the most out of your drive. Senior day between the hedges. This before the game, Stetson Bennett with his younger brother on the team as well, able to have his whole family here on senior day. And an 83-yard wheel route a moment ago to McIntosh. Puts Georgia in position to break the tie and have the most wins for any senior class in a four-year span. Malik Rutherford on the return for the 10-yard line, the 15 yards cost Georgia and Rutherford with a terrific return to midfield. Let's go down to Chris. Stetson Bennett told me this week that he was getting emotional thinking about playing his final game inside Samford Stadium. He said I had to push back the tears and realize that all the moments that I enjoyed so much what was special about them? It was because I was in the moment. He wrote something down in his notes app that he's looked at throughout the week and it's quote you can't look back while you're trying to move forward. So obviously an emotional day. His mom was joking about wearing sunglasses because she had tears in her eyes before the game of what an capping off an incredible story. Well, whether it was playing behind Jake Fromm or having a Justin Fields or a JT Daniels, two of the most highly recruited quarterbacks in college football all end up here at some point during this cycle. After all of that to come out of the wash and have Stetson Bennett be potentially a back to back national championship starting quarterback. It's an amazing story. Gibson throws it away. 
It's hard to gauge competitive spirit. You know, it's, and that's probably something that has been his strongest asset is he never gave up on himself. We always believed that, you know, and even Kirby Smart said yesterday, because of the COVID year and not having spring football, I mean, he might have won the job just coming out of spring, but they weren't giving him maybe the necessary opportunities to absolutely run away and win that job. But he never doubted himself, man. It's, it's a story that every young kid should hear because that's probably the biggest part of the process is believing in yourself when no one else does. Gibson to the sideline. And he gets to midfield and runs out of bounds for two. I think the reason you feel so wonderful for someone like Stetson Bennett is he's playing without a net. Right? He's never going to get the second chance Correct. to go out there and win the job the way if you're in the NFL and you're a top five draft choice and they're invested in you. Or, or you're a five-star recruit. Right, or you're the number one quarterback recruit, as so often has been the case, a big-time recruit coming to a place like Georgia, you're going to get multiple tries sure. to become the quarterback. You're Bennett. You get one swing at it. And if you, at, at, at some point, end up losing the job, you'll never get a chance, most likely, to get it back. No, especially at a program that is expected to win national championships. Coaches aren't going to leave national championship contending teams with a quarterback that's not good enough. Well, Felix lost a yard on third down and eight. And so you had to figure... That's a play call on third down saying we're going for it on fourth down. But now it's fourth down and nine with 12 and a half minutes to go. And Georgia Tech, it looks like we'll leave their offense out there. Bobby, you can make the case for Georgia's offense that their three best players are guys that weren't these superstar recruits. I mean, you know, Lad McConkie was not a superstar recruit. We just talked about Stetson Bennett. Brock Bowers was sending clips of himself running up hills through recruiting processes. You know, like, their three best guys are guys who had to go earn it. The blitz picked up. Gibson takes a shot, but throws it up over the head of E.J. Jenkins. So Georgia Tech will turn it over on downs near midfield with 12 minutes to go. Keely Ringo in perfect position to wall off the attempt by E.J. Jenkins. You know, Jordan Tuck came in here and played a darn good football game, though. You know, like, Brett Key and his staff had a very specific plan. They wanted to go operate. They did it exactly the way they expected to last week when they beat up on North Carolina, who's a good football team. And for a long part of this game, hung and certainly put a little bit of scare and or hesitation into Georgia. I think Georgia Tech's got to look hard. Look long and hard at Brent Key as the, the answer, man. This is a four and three football team since he's taken over. They came and played for the better part of a, a half, a half, almost three quarters. The number one team in the country at their home stadium pretty well. And as you said, a couple of ranked wins as well with that comeback win against North Carolina last week as Milton dives ahead. Well, you came right out and asked Brent Key when we talked to him. He said, look, I don't, I don't what did know if you're going to tell us right. whether or not you've had conversations with the powers that be and he said look I'm not going to tell you about any conversations I've had yep but you said do you want the job he said I absolutely want this job he said I you're stay damn here right kids. he said you're damn right I want this job yep. you know and um, I, I just really impressed with our time with him um, I think he's got a really good vision and the first thing we said to him was like man your team is playing hard and that's a testament to you and your coaching staff that even in the midst of you know their season's been a season that's had a lot of dis distraction. Milton right up the middle. Padding the lead for Georgia to the house. 44 yards. Five straight possessions with points for Georgia. And that's touchdowns. Three of the last four times they've had the ball. And they have blown this one open. It's now a 30-point lead. What a big-time run by Georgia. You follow up your big buys in front. Milton runs away from the defense. It's 38-7, Georgia.
Matt Barry back in our college football studio. The noon window continues to be entertaining. South Carolina is just taking the lead on Clemson over on ABC. West Virginia up on Oklahoma State on ESPN2. And Marshall and Georgia State on ESPN+. Gentlemen, back to you. All right, Matt, thanks a lot. 11-13 to go in the fourth quarter. And the score now reads what you probably would have expected it to read yeah. if you weren't watching this game. But how we got here was well, not what we expected. And that was Georgia Tech off to a great start. They really self-destructed with some mistakes. 75 yards on their first drive and only 114 yards of total offense since. Well, the SEC Network has you covered before and after next Saturday's LSU Georgia SEC Championship game. Before at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, starting with Marty and McGee, right on through SEC Nation. And a four hour pregame that will take you after the game as well. Be sure to head back to the SEC Network, a full breakdown, as well as interviews with players and coaches. You can always watch on the ESPN app if you are out and about a full day of coverage on the SEC Network next Saturday surrounding the championship game. So Tyson Pumachan now in at quarterback. And a quick toss to Dante Smith. And he gets walloped at about the 30-yard line. They'll mark him down after a gain of four and a half. Dalen Everett came over and made the stop. Pumachan to Smith again. He sprints right, picks up the first down, about six yards. Tyke Smith in on the tackle. Finishing up that Brett Key conversation. You know, this season for Georgia Tech has had a ton of distractions. And I think you have to be encouraged if you're administration to look at what he's done. It's also understanding 80% of this football roster is underclassmen. It's the second youngest roster in college football. He obviously has a good connection with those players. You gotta look long and hard at it. Well, Bear Alexander just made a nice connection with Tyson Pumachan <laughs> and drove him into the turf here at Sanford Stadium. It's going to be second down and long. And now Zach Gibson will come back in. Flag down on the play. Pitcher to grounding. The offense number 17. That penalty is a loss of down at the spot of the foul. Second down. So Pumachan got out of the pocket but did not get the ball back to the line of scrimmage when he threw it away. As Bear Alexander. The true freshman was tracking him down. And that certainly seems like the right call as that ball came up a yard or two shy of the line of scrimmage. So that puts Zach Gibson way behind the chains with under 10 minutes to go. Second and 14 as Gibson comes back in at quarterback. He's under pressure. He's going to run, and he will go down at the 31-yard line. It looks like a loss of a yard. Marvin Jones, whose dad, of course, a Butkus and Lombardi winner at Florida State, and then had a long career with the Jets. And Marvin Jr. gets up with a little bit of a limp, and it looks like he's going to go down, and the training staff's going to have to come out and take a look. Injury timeout, so we will step aside. The National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper is here in Athens. And they had last year's version. And will they get to keep this year's version as well? The way this defense is playing, tough to bet against them. 
The undefeated dogs with nine and a half minutes to go after the injury timeout. Third and 15. Zach Gibson. Pocket collapsing. Sacked. Back to the 20 yard line. Michael Williams. MJ Sherman. They met at the quarterback. It's a loss of 11. Just a defensive line stunt game. Williams comes all the way around. Watch 13 pop into your screen. Great job by their defensive front. That's what I, we talked about it early on in this game. Georgia loves to get into those passing situations. They play coverage. Force any kind of throw to be contested in those defensive linemen games where they wrap around or two-man stunts. One guy goes in, one guy goes out. Really hard to pick up for an offensive line. Makai Muse gets a chance to return a kick here from the 30. To midfield and across. Good field position again for Georgia as we go back to Matt. Guys, take a look what's going on at the shoe between Michigan and Ohio State. J.J. McCarthy on third and goal. And right now it's 31-20 Michigan, start of the fourth quarter. <laughs> now the question becomes, can Ohio State stay in? Ohio State's great win or good win is going to go a long way to, to what happens tonight. Because Ohio State's best win probably is Notre Dame, week one. But if Notre Dame's a four-loss Notre Dame, that's tough to sit there and say that's your best win. Carson Beck at quarterback as Stetson Bennett is done on senior day. And here's a handoff to the true freshman Branson Robinson. And that'll take us under eight minutes to go. Well, the percent chance to reach the college football playoff, how it changes based on the win or loss for either team. If Michigan holds on, they're basically saying they're in. If Ohio State, Ohio State loses the game, they still have, according at least to our CPI, an 80% chance to get in. Wide receiver screen. I mean, so you, they, but that would have to be sitting there thinking that TCU, I mean, you're not going to get in if you're Ohio State, if TCU does not lose. And or if USC wins out, I can't imagine them getting, not getting in over a one loss non-conference champion, Ohio State. Ohio State got in one year as a one loss non-conference champion when they lost to Penn State, but were still deemed to be one of the top four teams. Ohio State was actually a team that I thought was going to match up well against Georgia because I just felt because of the pass game and the multiple receivers that they have, that would give them their best option. Robinson comes up a yard shy of the first down, so it will be fourth and one. So as we take a look at our chances to reach the college football playoff based on the outcome of the Michigan-Ohio State game today, if Michigan wins... Our playoff predictor still believes that it will be Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio State, most likely as the four remaining teams. And really, the odds, according to our predictor, as Robinson is able to pick up the first down, is that Michigan and Ohio State would both be in, regardless of the outcome right. of this game, but just a much greater chance that Ohio State makes it with a loss than Michigan. It must be because the, at least in those projections, the committee doesn't value the ACC at all. Because if you're, and obviously Clemson playing South Carolina as we speak, but if Clemson were to win out, they would be a one loss conference champion and would have beaten South Carolina who trounced Tennessee last week and then beaten North Carolina. Wheel routes wide open. But a little late was Carson Beck on the delivery. Clayton Powell Lee came over and closed down the distance on Cash Jones. Stetson would have made that one. <laughs> Maybe that's what he's thinking. Um, just a little late if you're here, Carson Beck. One, two, three, four, five. Now get the ball out of your hands before Clayton Powell Lee can get over there. Just a, a, a blink late on throwing that wheel all the way back not all that different than the throw that Stetson Bennett hit to Kenny McIntosh to blow this game open they 
It's back on a keeper. Lost the football. And it looks like it's scooped up by Clayton Powell Lee. So Carson Beck, a little late on the wheel route. Ace Ely knocks it away from Carson Beck. And Kirby Smart watches his backup quarterback cough it up as Georgia Tech gets their first takeaway of the day. That's the 24th turnover that Georgia Tech's defense has created this season. Well, now that Thanksgiving is in the rearview mirror, it's time to write your Santa letter. And Santa delivered last season. He might come through again this year. Santa! With the way this defense is playing. As Georgia Tech has the ball at their own 35-yard line after the giveaway with 5.51 to go. Here comes a Georgia blitz. And the slant is there. Leo Blackburn has a first down. But, Dan, this is a defense for Georgia that lost five guys last year in the first round of the NFL draft. And they're number one again in points against this season. It only like one point per game higher than what they gave up last year with five first rounders, including the number one pick in the draft on their defensive line. And, and on top of that, Bob, also lost their best player, Jalen Carter, to injury. Climbing the ladder is Blackburn to pull one in. You know, lost Jalen Carter to injury for a chunk of this year, and then recently lost their best player, Nolan Smith. That's what's so impressive. Carter's gonna be a top five, top seven pick, Ringo, right now is playing really good cornerback and his size is spectacular. Nolan Smith likely a first rounder as well. So while there's still a lot of good talent, you're talking about Malachi Starks has come in as a true freshman and his humility has allowed him to play really well. Bullard's become a difference maker on the back end. Christopher Smith's an All-American and Nagurski finalist. The two young linebackers that we've talked about, Dumas Johnson and Munden, have played really good football. So, um, you know, for a team that had to replace so much talent, um, it's part of the recruiting. It's, it's part of the stretching of the rubber band philosophy that Kirby brings. They're always getting stressed, so they're always ready to play. What a great job by Gibson to extend the play and find Rutherford. And he's down to the 10-yard line. Zach Gibson creating in the pocket, but there is a flag down back at the line of scrimmage, and this is coming back. An eligible player downfield on the offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We play second half. That's, that's tough for Jordan Williams, the right guard, to know that behind him, his quarterback is running around trying to extend the play, and he gets caught downfield. You know, going back to watch Gibson, just 54 Jordan Williams, the right guard. You know, to your point, Bob, he doesn't know exactly where the ball is. He thinks that Gibson's taken off running right there. That's the right call by the officials. But going back to that point about Kirby, just asking him, uh, you know, how you keep your players constantly ready and never looking at the matchup. And he did use that rubber band analogy. Rutherford to the 26-yard line. You know, using the rubber band analogy, saying we, we constantly find different ways to stretch these players and stress these players so the 12 game days aren't that hard for them. They really try to focus on putting all those different situations throughout the year. This isn't just in fall it practice, starts right? starts spring practice through the spring game, summer camp. If you yep. can constantly put them in, in high-pressure yep. competitive situations against each other, the games are fun. Yep, and they don't start to look at that. That's how you can get to a point of not looking at who you're playing against. A broken tackle, and Dante Smith tries to power his way for the first down. And finally, the play blown dead. He's about a yard short. And that'll take us down to about three and a half minutes to go. And you got to have those intangibles. Like, Kirby made no bones about it. You've got to be talented. Like, you have to have the, the necessary talent to come play at Georgia. But he also believes in his resources as a program. And, and he said, if there's a kid that we believe can help our program talent-wise and that, you know, some of our resources can help him develop as a young man and a player, they will recruit him. The occasional four- and five-star player, though, still finds their way to Georgia. Yeah, yeah stumbles from, upon from him what happens. <laughs> and now a timeout called before fourth down and one by Zach Gibson. He'll walk over to the sideline. 
And there's no question Kirby Smart prides himself. Certainly you mentioned Stetson Bennett, Lad McConkey, good examples of finding the diamond in the rough that becomes a great player for this program. But since 2016, since he took over, they got 15 five stars and seven top 10 classes. And how about the this offensive line that's got a top 10 offense in America and second in the country in rushing touchdowns and average 38 a game. They don't have a single senior in there too deep on the offensive line. So that unit's going to come back. I know they've got a 2024 quarterback recruit, Ryan Puglisi from Avon Old Forms in Connecticut that's coming down as a big time quarterback talent as well. So to your point, there are some gems that they find in the Lad McConkeys and Stetson Bennett, but they also get a bunch of really good players. Georgia Tech playing for pride on fourth down and one. They'll toss it to Smith. He wants to throw it, and the trick play bobbled but works. Malachi Carter for the touchdown. And watch, so this is Smith on the toss, and then this is Carter, okay? He's going to go run the corner route. See, as he tosses, everybody for Georgia comes downhill, thinking here comes this run. He pulls off. Carter leaks to that front pylon. And Dante Smith, ooh, a bobble there, but the touchdown. Really cool play call by Georgia Tech in that moment. So the second touchdown for Georgia Tech and the first points they've put on the board since their opening possession of the game and at least a reason to smile for the Yellow Jackets on the short end of a lopsided loss once again to the Dogs as we take a look at our SEC spotlight brought to you by T-Mobile and we look ahead to the championship game the fifth meeting for the SEC title between Georgia and LSU and LSU highest ranked two loss team in the college football playoff rankings since Auburn in 2017 if LSU beats Georgia oh, is that going to put them into the top four do they have a puncher's chance I, I to win the game against Georgia and if they do as a two loss team would they get in they'll have to play their best game of the year to beat Georgia okay do they have a chance with two? So I want to talk about the matchup a little bit first. Okay. So I think they've got talent defensively, LSU, special with Perkins, to keep themselves in the game. Offensively, Jaden Daniels throughout this year really grew up and used his feet a lot more in their offense. We know they've got perimeter players, Keyshawn Boutte, you know, really good perimeter players. But I feel Georgia will match up well against them defensively. But... If Georgia somehow were to beat, or excuse me, LSU were somehow to beat Georgia, yep. I think the Florida State loss looks better week one, right? Because Florida State now is a top 15 ranked team, top 13 ranked team. And how much do they value Tennessee still as a committee? You know, because Tennessee, we called when Tennessee absolutely blew the doors off of LSU at home. Georgia Tech. And it looks like a timeout was called before the onside kick by Georgia from the sideline. I mean, what you're hoping if you are on LSU, obviously, to get a win against Georgia to try and get in. But if you're USC, if you're Clemson, if you're TCU, if you're the loser of the Michigan-Ohio State game, you need Georgia to beat LSU to take that competition totally. out of the conversation. I still think, like, I I'm still surprised that USC is such a long shot if they win out. They would have a pretty impressive win tonight versus Notre Dame. And then the Pac-12 championship, their one loss would be by one point on a two-point conversion to a Utah team that I think sits in the top 12 right now. You know, like, that's the team that I, and again, I, I, if I told you Ohio State, I thought was the best matchup versus Georgia. I could sit here and say because of Caleb Williams, I think USC, just as far as like the ability to have firepower, at least offensively, would be fun to watch against this Georgia defense. There's the onside kick, and McConkey runs over, touches the ball, but gets bailed out by one of his teammates. Looks like Rosemey Jack Saint covers it up. So Georgia will have it with 2.52 to go. 
McConkie goes and attacks it. Looked like he was going to cover it no up. No doubt. Rosemey Jack Saint was there. Good job by Rosemey Jack Saint just running to the football. And by the way, before we even worry about Clemson as a potential bubble team, they're losing right now to South Carolina by a point late Ooh. in the fourth quarter. So even a narrow win over a South Carolina might oh, good be point. enough for the committee to say, Clemson, you're no longer a bubble team. No, good point. And as Robinson goes up the middle, now what might be the final possession of the game. I still think the whole conversation nationally is who can beat Georgia? Sure. You know, obviously they're the team that hasn't lost in however many games and the overwhelming most dominant team in college football this season. Without Ohio State in, I don't know if anybody I sit here, and at least that I've seen, I go, yep, they're, they're capable of beating them. Well, Georgia is number one, but all time in program history, they are three and five against the number one team. Stetson Bennett started two of those games where Georgia has played mm -hmm. number one, and he's won them both. Mm -hmm. Right. As they won last year in the championship game against Alabama, mm -hmm. and this year Tennessee was number like, one. Like I don't Georgia think, took them out. I don't think TCU is physical enough to play against Georgia. Michigan, we saw that last year. I don't know if they're good enough on the perimeter to have success against Georgia's defense. I honestly felt it was Ohio State and or USC because of at least the, the, the diversity of their perimeter players. So we've got an injury timeout. And there's one lone tiger eye over That's there gutsy. in the student section. As he's getting set for that SEC championship game. And this is what LSU is up against. The dominance of this program, 29-1 and one in their last 30 games, improving upon that today and outscoring the opposition by an average of close to 27 a game. Third program since 1992 to go undefeated in the SEC in the regular season and undefeated again this year, leading FBS in points allowed and 11th in points scored. And that in spite of the fact that they lost 15 right. players last year to the draft. Is this, is this one of the best SEC runs in the last 20, 30 years, right? Alabama. I, I would think they would need to continue to actually get to the championship game and win national championships to do it. Right. Because Alabama and Clemson both did that. They both won multiple national championships I'm talking in this SEC playoff runs. era. SEC runs. Yeah, right. Well, Alabama. Right. I mean, Al Alabama's run over the past, you know, whatever, 15 years under Nick Saban. I mean, Georgia still has, I think, some, some making up to do before sure. they can go side by side with what Alabama's accomplished. But I could also sit here and tell you, I think you can make the case at least that Georgia's arrow is pointing slightly up. And I'm not saying Alabama's not, right, like falling off the cliff. But Georgia, at least over the last two or so years, you've got to feel is a little bit more ascending on their start of their run where maybe Alabama's plateaued, I guess. Huh? You have to do it over an extended period of time before there's going to be that changing of the guard. As What's up again, with all these other fans here? They're sneaking in. That's allowed. <laughs> He's camouflaged because it's a similar color. We would never allow someone to wear a Rutgers sweatshirt at a UConn game. Well, I mean, if you're going to wear Rutgers colors at a UConn game, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> would be dumb enough to do that. So with Clayton Powell Lee being helped off the field, we're down to the final 90 seconds. And it's third down and a foot for Georgia as they try and get to the point where it will be victory formation. Carson Beck at quarterback. Cash Jones and Branson Robinson have been doing the work at tailback. It is Robinson in there to take the handoff and pick up the first down. So Georgia Tech put up a good fight early. And clean old-fashioned hate got off to an ex unexpected start. 
when the Ramblin' Wreck went right down the field and scored a touchdown on their opening drive. But then some self-inflicted wounds by Georgia Tech and the dominance of Georgia eventually taking over. And it will be a 12-0 regular season for the Dogs as they head into the SEC championship game next week. Beck takes one final knee, and that will make it official. 37-14, Georgia for the fifth consecutive meeting with Georgia Tech comes away as the winner. And now Kirby Smart will get his team set for LSU and the SEC title game. Coming up next, college football scoreboard for Dan Orlovsky and Chris Budden and our entire crew. I'm Bob Bushusen saying so long from Athens. 37-14, Georgia wins it.